okay so we have designed the backend class to handle the logic when user will send the coins to someone now we need to design the front end so we will be using flask for the front end so let's go ahead and create a new directory inside the front end so create templates so this is where we'll keep our templates so this is where we'll keep our html files so create a file called wallet dot html so for front end this is the logic we have it's a very simple logic so what exactly this is this is the standard html uh, tags so we have attached the style sheet here that we will develop and uh, then this is the important one so we have created the division element and we have created the wallet container to style our division element and also we have defined the hashtag send bitcoins and this is the form where a user will enter the input and also we have defined the message if in case we need to display any error message or any information message so we'll use this message tag here and otherwise it's a very simple so from address uh, this is a label and this is the input tag where user will enter uh, the text which means the from address and then we have the to address this is where user will give the to address then the amount which is in numeric form and this is a submit button and that's pretty much we have it in the html form so let's go ahead and define the static file here static directory and inside the static directory we will create style.css okay and uh, one more thing we are gonna do is now we will create the logic to display the form so let's go ahead and create one more module run.py so this is where we will define our flask logic so go ahead and import from flask import flask and render template and request you should already have flask installed because when we install the requirement.txt it had all the modules just in case you don't have it just do pip install flask and you will have the flask installed on your system and the next we will import from blockchain dot client blockchain dot client dot send btc import send btc save and create an instance for the flask this is a standard we'll create app and then define a function wallet this function we will use to display the html form that we just created wallet.html and to display we need to also define the route so let's go ahead and define app dot route so by default it should display the wallet form and methods methods will be using get and put because we will be sending and receiving the data so we'll use both get and post not put methods equals to okay so now next is check if request dot method equals to post 
that means user has entered some data and hit on the submit button so we will receive something and now we are going to receive the data from the form that user has entered and uh, let's go ahead and define from address so first receive the from address that user has entered request dot form dot get from address and this from address variable is already defined inside the html form if you'll see it here so this is from where we are reading these variables from address and same will apply for to address and amount let's copy this one and two replace it with uh, to address and same goes here to address and third is amount and do amount and we have defined the amount as integer so let's define type equals to int by default is string and now let's go ahead and create the instance for our send btc class that we have imported so do send btc and we know that send btc takes from address to address amount it also takes utxo we'll get there but for now just create the instance here send coin so this is the instance we have created and so next we will call the prepare transaction function that is defined right here prepare transaction and if it is a success it will return true otherwise false so let's go ahead and call this function here send coin dot prepare transaction and uh, define the if condition since we are returning true and false flag if not so that means there is an error so we will define the message equals to in sufficient balance so if you remember we have also defined the message tag here so by default message will be blank if there is error so it will display this message and finally we will render the template so let's do return render template and pass wallet.html that we created and also pass message equals to message so this message is replacing the message here that we have defined here so basically it is replacing or updating all the fields that are defined in this html form and we are updating it via flask from here by using render template let's save it and the next step is main and this is where we will receive the utxos define it as a global variable utxos and then do utxos utxos equals to the one that we have received in the function as a parameter and finally app dot run save it and that's it let's quickly check if we have done everything so we have created the flask app instance we have defined the wallet and we have also defined the route so when we will hit the url by default it will open the wallet page 
and it will render this page HTML uh, wallet.html and uh, now we need to take care of one more thing so go to blockchain and inside blockchain import from multiprocessing import process and manager and now we need to understand why are we doing that because our front end will be running in a separate process and the back end which is blockchain it will be running in a separate process we can run it in the same process but then it will slow down our mining and we don't want to do that so most of the laptops has i think five to seven cores of the processor so it's better to run the processes on separate processor so that it will be fast and uh, the only caveat with that is it's very difficult to share the data between processes if you are running everything in a single process you don't have to worry about the data sharing data sharing is very easy but in multi-processing we have to take care of data sharing manually we have to find a way so that we can share the data between processes so since front end is a different process blockchain is a different process our utxos are created in the backend process which is blockchain and we need to share it with the front end as well because once we'll receive the request from the user we have to check that if user has enough balance or not and the only way to check that balance is if we'll share the data between uh, processes so let's go ahead and define that so we need to create a shared dictionary so and in that dictionary we will save our utxos so right here create with manager as manager create utxos so this is the dictionary we are going to create with manager special type of function so this will create a shared dictionary and we will be able to use this dictionary between the processes and let's move them inside this also let's import the main function from the run module from blockchain dot front end dot run import main so let's go ahead and uh, trigger this process so the way to run this main function in a separate process is like this process target equals to main and make sure you are not giving the main function like this otherwise it will execute it we need to give main function just the definition of the function and arguments yes we are passing the arguments as a utxo so utxo is the only argument we are passing and then we need to start the process so let's assign it to a variable web app and then let's start the process web app dot start so this will start the process and now we will be able to share the data whatever data will update in the blockchain module it will be shared in the front end as well which is in our run module so now let's go ahead and allocate or assign the transactions to utxo so let's pass utxo here as well utxos and go in our init method and let's pass utxos and to replace pass self dot utxos equals to utxos save it so let's define one more function define store utxos in cache so this is a cache memory where we are storing the utxo self and then transaction and to self dot utxos transaction dot txid since it is a dictionary so transaction id would be our key 
and then transaction itself will be stored in UTXO. And let's define the documentation. Keep track of all the unspent transactions in cache memory for fast retrieval. So we are doing this for very reason so that we can quickly retrieve the data from the cache memory and even in actual Bitcoin blockchain the unspent transactions are stored in your cache memory. So let's go ahead and uh, call this function inside the add block right here to self dot store utxo in cache right now we just have the coinbase transaction so let's pass this here and save it okay so we are done with everything and let's quickly verify so we have defined the shared dictionary now we will be able to share the data between processes and um, inside the static we need to create uh, one more directory inside static it should be css and then we should move the uh, style.css inside css save it and now let's run this process and hopefully we will have the front end up and running now uh yeah one more thing we need to take care is uh inside the run module we passed the utxo so that we are receiving it here so let's pass this utxo here as well inside the send and i think that should do so let's run it okay so we have the front end started so let's open up our browser cool so we have uh, the form rendered successfully this is what we defined inside our html but uh, right now this is a, just a plain form so we need to style it so let's go inside the style.css and copy and paste the css you have attached in your course and then it will look good so copy and paste it here save and let's refresh the form and let's see if we have the changes cool so we have the form rendered and it looks uh, beautiful right now so we have the from address to address and the amount okay so our front end is up and running but we won't be able to transfer coins from here right now if you remember inside the transaction uh, module we are using private and uh, the minus uh, public address but this address is not saved inside our account file and if you remember our send btc method is checking for a private key inside the account file right here so since those keys are not there so it will fail so we need to save these keys inside the account file so let me copy them copy the private key go inside the account file i'll replace this private key with the one that we need since we are not using this account so it's okay and also the public address copy this go inside account file again and replace your address as well you can either add or replace so i just replaced it so now we can try sending some coins from here so this is the address i'm sending five bitcoins to this address and hopefully it will not throw any error yeah so we do not have any error that means it worked perfectly fine so in the next session we will see how to include those transactions inside the block and how to verify them